welcome back. As you could probably tell from the intro there, I'm at the wood yard. Here to do some bits and bobs, including starting to get the wood yard off grid. Um, and I'm gonna spend the night as well. Got a load of gear in the back here. I'm gonna set up the tent first because I can see some dark clouds on the horizon. <laughs> so I wanna get the tent up and um, then get on with the other bits and bobs because most of that can be undercover over there. Um, got the bell tent with me, so that's gonna be nice. Uh, not used it for a while, just wanted to kind of check it over on that really. So I better get started. Now there's a very good chance you're gonna hear tractors and uh, machinery operating in the background. It's just uh, part of the course for being in a wood yard. There is also a lane, a road down the end there as well. Um, but I'm on the opposite end of the yard here. There's a wooded area, farmland, and a nice stream going past. And we've got a lovely pond over there as well. So I'm just going to set up down here, and later on tonight it's going to be nice and quiet down here. It's pretty handy having this uh, footprint for the bell tent, because it is obviously quite large. So it uh, shows you where you can actually fit it. I'm not going to say it's put up the best ever, but uh, I was a bit worried about them dark clouds, which seem to be going over us with no trouble, for now. Um, yeah, do love the bell tent. I think I'm going to throw the stuff in pretty quick, and then get to work doing some stuff in the woodyard. Now I've got my chair, bed, and table for you come apparent later why I've got the table and something to try out in here later. So we're going to be fully furnished. It should be quite a comfortable night. I may even stay tomorrow night as well. That might be an off camera thing. Could have done with a clean. That's pretty much all set up now. Um, little bits I can do later anyway. Uh, need to go have a cup of tea in the office <laughs> and uh, then I'll show you a couple of projects. Oh and incidentally, yes, you probably did notice I have had the truck lifted and got my new wheels and tires on as well. It's not the budget project I was hoping for. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now some of you will remember Tig from the last video here in the woodyard. If you've not seen that video, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of use of the sawmill and stuff, prepping materials for an upcoming cabin build. But uh, yeah, Tig's my friend. <laughs> Wanna play? Let me know in the comments if you want me to take Tig on a camp. I think it could be quite fun. A little bit of company for a change. No offence Mark and Simon. <laughs> Alright, so I'm in the office here, and um, this is kind of the centre of this video really. Um, it kind of evolved. <laughs> well, it was uh, after getting a power bank for the um, sawmill, because uh, it doesn't have an alternator, just for the battery. And um, I was on the lookout for something that was um, waterproof, that could stay out there with it, and just kind of trickle charge and have a small solar panel on it. Um, and I was talking to Bluity, and they suggested this. So it kind of changed the scope of the video and um, I thought I'd put it in this and do a camp and stuff as well. Now it's not sponsored or anything but they sent it along for me to use and we're using it to um, kind of change the yard to more of an off-grid. Um, obviously a lot of the machinery here you know runs off of diesel etc but um, there are certain things and certain tasks that uh, use electricity um, including in here and um, yeah this combo which is the AC500 and B300 uh, is an off-grid beast. I've looked at some power banks on this channel and the review channel before and nothing has come close to this. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear the tractor outside but like I said this is a working wood yard. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, You've got the B300S down here, 3072 watt hour battery, and that's connected to the top here, which is like the control unit. It's the AC500, 5000 watt. I think the biggest I've ever used is 3000 watt, so this thing is, you know, absolutely incredible. And the two are connected by this beast of a cable that you can see on the side there. Now the unit's connected up to a big old 420 watt solar panel out the front there. Um, at the moment we've only got the short cable that comes with it but we're going to look for a longer cable and mount that on top of one of the containers here or something. So that goes straight into the control unit here and as you can see you've got all your outputs DC 12 volt, 24 volt, USB-C, USB-A, um, you've got all your 13 amp plugs along here and then this 32 amp one here. Um, we've just got the one battery hooked up. I think you can have something like six batteries on this thing and even on the battery itself you've got a 12 volt and some USBs as well. Even on the top of the unit here you've got 15 watt wireless charging and there's actually two of them. Now a couple of things about this is it's sold as like a, a home power backup basically. So this is absolutely perfect for off-grid, for cabins and things like that, or as a backup. It's a UPS, so if you've got things like a computer plugged into it, it's just going to pass through electricity, and then if there is a power cut, it's going to switch over internally within, I think it's 20 milliseconds, and you should be completely uninterrupted with what you're doing. Um, so it's great in that sense. It's also pure sine wave, so it's better for um, more sensitive equipment, and you've got the touch screen up here as well, turn on your DC, AC, all your settings, you can see what you're getting from the solar panel at any one point. You've also got a app on the phone as well. Now some of you remember a while back, I was actually in the bell tent, I was using this now light, which is kind of um, charged through pulling on this cable or it comes with the solar panel as well. And um, yeah, just has this extension light as well. So things like this, we can use in the yard here and um, basically have lighting for free, obviously it can get quite dark in containers and stuff like that and just USB them up to this, have the solar panel directly into this and the solar panel into the power bank as well 
and um, just little things like that just all add up basically. It's been here a couple of weeks now and we've just been playing around with it, um, seeing how long it takes with the solar panel. I think um, during the summer this is going to take a full charge every day off that solar panel. It seems to go quite quick when that sun is out. Obviously we've had a lot of rain lately so it's been in and out and just um, getting the odd hour of sunshine. Um, but yeah, boiling the kettle, um, charging up Makita batteries and things like that, even taking it on site and stuff as well, which is quite handy. Um, but today I thought, because um, I'm doing a few things in the yard, I'm just going to put it to the test. <laughs> I don't know all the technical details that some of these other videos do, testing it and seeing just how great it is. There's a load of them if you want to sit down and go through all of that. I just want to put it to the test and see what it can actually power, you know, on a commercial scale. Apologies for the noise, we're quite near the road on this side, but this is just to show you the 420 watt uh, big old solar panel. Um, obviously we're moving into summer now, so it's going to get used to a lot more, but the other day got like 15% in just over an hour on that massive battery. So yeah, we're going to be getting a whole charge on that big thing every single day. And you can imagine the savings on that over the years. But yeah, angled nicely towards the side with the sun here. That's quite hot. <laughs> right, let's get to work. Now a lot of what gets coppiced here in uh, Kent is chestnut. You've seen me use it a load before and this woodyard specialises in chestnut, making things like hurdles and other such that we're going to be looking at later. And the first step of this after it's been coppiced is to use a peeler like this to obviously peel off the bark and get it ready to use. And that's a hell of a lot quicker than using a draw knife. <laughs> so we're on the A-frame here, got the fro and a mallet, and uh, placed in the chestnut. We're just gonna split that down into the pieces we need. Now I'm in one of the containers here with my uprights and we're going to make the holes in there. Now once upon a time this would have been done with a twy bill. You'd use a hand drill in the woods to make a hole. Then you'd use this to cut out the hole on either side and then splinter out the wood with that side of the tool. Now thankfully, now we don't have to do that. <laughs> We've got a mortiser behind me here which, oh look what it draws, but it draws a lot of power. And that's going straight into the power bank so we're going to see how that kind of works cutting these out.
you can probably tell, it's pouring. Got a thunderstorm come, come and roll in, so I'm just having a quick tea break. <laughs> Well that was only drawing about three, four hundred watts at any one time, so I wonder if this uh, is going to draw any more. Right, that was a bit more, we were drawing about a thousand watts there, so we're going to do two thousand on the saw here. There we go. Finished hurdle. My first one actually, although I've had instructions. <laughs> um, did want to show the compressor being used, but just used nails in the end because they were rocking a bit, so just needed them to hold in place. But uh, not bad for a first attempt, I don't think. Um, any other jobs I'm going to save till tomorrow now. It's taken a while doing the filming for this. Um, and I think the rain is starting to calm now, it's been pretty heavy. So I'm hoping I close the door on the tent. <laughs> Oh, here we are, back in the bell tent. I left the door open while it was raining and a little bit did get in. The irony of not putting up the awning. <laughs> you can see me behind me here. I've got the oven. It was in one video before, I think, so this is the second time I've only used it. And um, down there is a small fridge somewhere and obviously the power bank as well. So we've got plenty of power left in it. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna cook a lasagna. So I'm going to be using the stove top and the oven on that. Um, yeah, feeling quite cosy. It's not raining anymore. In fact, there's some blue skies. The uh, yard has gone back to how it was now. It's, it's getting muddy and very wet again. <laughs> it's just starting to dry out. So the fridge is 12 volt DC, just going to plug that direct into the battery down here. And the oven into the mains, I'll use this one because it's the closest on this side. I'll get that powered on, I believe I press and hold. There we go. And we want DC 
on, AC on. Got some breakfast stuff to put in here. Have to squidge that in a bit. Sausages, some meat for tonight, some chocolate there as well. Oh, and some cheese. So get that squidged in better. For some reason the fridge wasn't working on DC so I've used AC and it's taking 93, 94 watts at the moment. That'd go down once it's cool obviously. Right to start off I've got to do some chopping. Uh, it's going to be hard to get the right amount for a lasagna for one but uh, I shall try. So I've got some celery, got some onion, I've got some uh, carrot, got some garlic somewhere as well. Down. Okay, I think that should be enough for a lasagna for one. Get that frying. Well, it's starting to get hot now, so going to go in with this, not waste electricity. That looks like quite a lot. <laughs> right, we've got some sizzle going on. So I'm not going to cook this quite as long as I ordinarily would, but uh, get it soft. Strawing, 2300 watts. Clicks down to a thousand now and again, I guess there's like a management of heat. Transferred the vegetables to a plate and I'm just going to put a pork and a beef mix in the pan. It's not the hottest of stove tops, but it gets the job done in the end. some seasoning in there. That's the vegetables in with the meat now. And add some chopped tomatoes. I've got both hobs on and that's going to simmer away over there while I make a bit of a roux here for a bechamel. Start adding some flour in here. Get that mixed in. cook that just for a second and add the milk. And here comes the milk, bit by bit, make sure it's not lumpy. Time to build my lasagna here, so I'm gonna put down some of my bechamel as a bit of a base. It's quite thin actually. And I think, oh look at that, <laughs> a little bit of touch more on top. And then my ragu. should do for that layer. Another sheet. Some more of this. And 
and with our last layer put in the dish now and some parmesan and with the oven on stick that in and cross our fingers it's nice sat here actually yeah I can hear the road but very relaxed camp now after getting some work done we're doing some work uh, tomorrow on some smaller items and they are for the Kent County show um, the guy that owns this yard will be um, exhibiting there and um, they've roped me into exhibiting as well so I'm going to have my own stall at the um, Kent County show if any of you are local and want to pop by be within the kind of woodworking um, area or woodlands area whatever you want to call it and um, I'll be demoing a few little bushcrafty things um, I'll also be selling a few things from makers that I use on the channel as well uh, so yeah come along and say hi and you can see the stuff that we make as well on the other stall but there's some great exhibitors down there it's really starting to smell nice in here I'm getting so hungry I've had a slice of toast and a sausage roll and lots of tea today and it's like getting on for 8 o'clock now I think <laughs> absolutely starving well, it smells really tempting so I'm going to have to get it out Ooh. oh my goodness that looks better than I'd hoped I really love the sort of crispy bits you get on the edges I could eat it out here but I need to do a slice don't I would you look at that oh my god am I looking forward to this here we go it just looks so good I'm so happy <laughs> To be honest, I don't make lasagnas all that often. It's not my most go-to meal. Mm. If electricity wasn't a problem, which it isn't to be honest with what I've got left, I would have cooked the ragu down, stewed it a hell of a lot longer. But this is good. Mm. I love the crispy bit on top. How could I forget? <laughs> I've got some uh, punk IPAs with me. Cheers, everyone. Oh yes, matches well. I've got some wood wall fire lighters in here and loads of shavings from the yard. So this should be a nice easy fire to get going. really boggy down here, it's um, lower than the rest of the yard, but uh, this seems to be going quite well considering I'm squelching about all over the place.
finally looks like the sun's starting to come out, which is good. It's been a chilly morning. A little bit chilly last night as well, to be honest. I've just got the fire going. It's a bit of a upside down fire, kind of. Just trying to get it off this real swampy ground here. <laughs> oh, warmth is blowing this way. <laughs> That's quite nice. Yeah, so get this going for a little while, get some coals and I'll cook breakfast for whoever is in the yard today and um, get on with some other projects. At least the fire's going quite well now. Should be a nice bed of coals there. But it is just so boggy down here. I was a bit worried. When I woke up I was half tempted to just use the oven and bunk some sausages in there. But uh, it's nice to have a fire. Especially as it was pretty chilly earlier. It's now uh, blue skies. Well, it looks like I'm going to be cooking for four breakfast and I've got my Biddy Big Q grill which Mark trod on last week and it's a bit bent out of shape so it's a bit more wobbly than usual but I'm going to use this brand new cast iron hot plate thing which uh, is by Overmont who do the Dutch ovens I use. I've never used it, I've not seasoned it myself so it's just pre-seasoned so hmm, we'll see how it goes, I'll oil it up good. All right, so it's two sausages in each panini, ciabatta, whatever you want to call it. There is a fourth one, but he's not arrived yet. <laughs> Got our bacon. Just going to spread that out a bit. And our eggs. I've got ketchup, but that's their choice. Look who's back. Right, first job I'm going to be doing is just drilling some holes in these pieces of chestnut, about a month old. And I'm going to be putting in these wooden dowels which are impregnated with um, fungus, uh, I believe they're oysters, and then seal over the holes with wax, stick them in the ground like that and then wait a while and hopefully we'll feast.
I've come back down where the tent is because it stays quite moist down here. I've just dug shall shallow holes just to hold them in place. And I'll just dig that dirt in back around them and I'll just hold them down here. It's raining pretty heavy again outside, so I'm back in the arts and crafts container. There's a few things going on in here at the moment for the uh, Kent show. I'll show you some in a bit. For the moment, I'm going to start making a chopping board. Um, there's quite a few behind me here in progress. So just getting on with another one. Now we've got here a piece of London plane. It's ripped down one side, but it's got kind of a live edge on the other side here. And we've got a um, some templates for handles which is quite handy and uh, this is quite a wide board so I think there's a nice kind of side on ones and that it's quite wide on here we're going to use pretty much the whole of the board including the live edge kind of like on these and just take these corners out Now I was going to use the power bank for this, uh, maybe use the bandsaw, but uh, I decided not to. I can't bother to bring the um, power bank out here at the moment because we're not set up properly for it powering here from in there. And uh, I think we'll get the idea. It's extremely powerful, <laughs> extremely good. So I'm uh, just going to use this jigsaw. Right, that's starting to come up quite nice now. Um, done a bit of a wavy edge on one side to match the other side. Um, it's gone through the thickness planer, but it's gonna need a lot of sanding and finishing, etc. I think this one's gonna have resin in it as well. Just clear resin for the um, sort of cracks and stuff. But uh, yeah, there's a few of these in progress. We've got uh, bird houses from these hollow logs which is quite nice very natural looking tea light holders and stuff like that and uh, yeah all this stuff's going on the Kent show um, I'm saying we I'm not doing much of it <laughs> but I think I'm gonna end the video there because I've no idea how long this video is it's a bit of an unusual one but I hope you found it interesting um, I think the next video I'll do here provided they're doing one is a charcoal burn and that's a very long process, so I'm not quite sure how to make that an interesting video because it's going to be quite repetitive and stuff like that. Um, we'll see, maybe we'll cook some food overnight if we do it overnight. Something like that, get drunk, <laughs> I don't know. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, I may spend the night here again, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've got to pop home either way. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, I'm rabbiting on now. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.